Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to give you some plays and some strategies on how you can beat a man-to-man -man full court press. Now, some quick simple tips that your team needs to run is for one, never dribble the ball up the sidelines. Those are areas that players like to, or the other team, the defensive team likes to trap your players in. So stay within. If there's a volleyball court painted on your basketball court, stay inside of that volleyball court. Generally speaking, that's a safe area to be in without getting trapped. Next is to try and not do too many dribbles and to try and pass the ball quickly. So let's get down to the clipboard and I'm going to show you a couple of plays that you can run against a full court man-to-man -man defense where you can even create possibilities of a quick fast break. Let's get down to the clipboard, let's check these out. Okay, so in this first play, we're going to start with our big players in the middle, our guards on the outside, and I always like to use player three as an inbounds player when we are running against a full court press, whether it be a zone or a man-to-man -man defense. Next, we're going to start with player five, setting a screen on player one, and player one is going to go and cut quickly towards the middle. He is going to receive that ball. Once that screen is started, we're going to be having player four setting a screen on player two, no matter where player two is. And player two blue is going to be cutting down the middle or towards the middle of the court. Player one is not going to be taking a dribble here. Of course, his man is going to try and recover. And what we're looking for is a quick pass up to player two. We have now essentially created a one on none fast break. Of course, that's the best case scenario. Next, after we have this screen and player one using his screen we're going to be having player five he is going to be going and setting a screen for player three that's going to be a back screen on his man and player three is going to be dribbling up or running up this right side again the volleyball court is roughly right here now we have possibly created a two on none fast break as well so really quickly you can beat a full court man with this play. And it's a very simple play as well. After four has set his screen, he's going to be then running up that right side or that far side. And now we have three on O. However, if we have a couple of quick players running back, we can now still at least go three on two, possibly three on one, two on one, two on uh, zero, whatever it may be. But this should, this play, should create many opportunities. Now this second play, we're gonna be having our two big players on the elbows, we're gonna be having player three inbounding, and we're gonna be having player one and two at a 45 degree angle out from the elbow. Now, what we're gonna be having here is player four. He is going to be setting a screen up for player two, and player two is going to be cutting towards the rim. He should be open for that pass. Next what we're going to be having is player one, he is going to be going and cutting across the court as fast as possible. Meanwhile, player four is going to be leaking out from his screen. So now what we're gonna be having is once player three makes that inbounds pass, we're going to be having now player five set that screen. And what we're gonna be looking for is player three leaking up the court so that now, if player two can get the pass to player one, he's all set. He can outlet pass to player three, or player two could just pass straight to player, player three. And what we're looking for is one or three to get that ball and looking down court for player four. We can then, then do the head pass to player four so that he can go in for that layup. So essentially how this play works is player three, after we've done all the screens, Player 3 passes to player 2, player 3 uses player 5 as a screen, and now player 1 or 3 is player 2's first options. If player 1 gets the ball, he can pass to player 3 because obviously his momentum is taking him towards that side of the court, or player 1 could also look down for player 4. Meanwhile, if player 2 passes to player 3, player 3 is just looking to dribble the ball down the court if player 4 is covered. 
If player 4 is not covered, then player 3 can pass down to player 4 for a layup. If player 1 gets the ball and neither of these players are open, and he is still able to dribble the ball down court, then 100% you've gotten the ball past half, and now we can set up our offense. Now these are great man-to-man -man press breaks. However, what happens if you're going up against something that looks like a zone, then all of a sudden they switch right into a man-to-man -man full court press. Well, let's say a traditional zone press press or press break that you're in already you can't just run like quickly run into a different press break because maybe player three already has that ball to pass the ball in so what i'm going to show you here is a quick uh press break that you can run if you're going up against somebody who just switched into a man-to-man -man press personally as a coach i've done this a few times myself where i say to my team hey the first uh, the first play, first time we score, we're going to do a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one diamond press. And then we're going to go into it a second time after our second time we score. Then that third time we're going to do it, they're thinking, oh, hey, they're going to press us. We need to run our press break. And that's when they're going to be saying, well, they're running a zone. Because anyways, most teams run zone presses anyways. So they're going to be running their zone press and they're going to be like, oh crap, we just switched into a man, which is what I like to do. So the third time around, I always like to switch things up. So I say to my team at the beginning of the game, before we start, first score, one, two, one, one. Second score, one, two, one, one. Third score, fake a one, two, one, one. As soon as they get that ball and they go to inbound the ball, they're running out of bounds to pass it in, we are switching right away to man. You pick up a guy, you go with him. And at this point, a lot of press breaks work differently when it's against a man-to-man -man versus one against his zone. So let's get down to the clipboard and I'll show you this one with a, uh, with a setup that is pretty common at the youth level. So we're gonna start with player two setting a screen on player one. Player one is going to use that screen and he is going to be then running over towards this elbow, maybe a couple feet past it. And player three is going to inbound the ball to player one. What we're going to be doing here now is having player four and five. He Player four is going to be staying where he is and we're going to be having player five move down court towards the free throw line extended or maybe just a bit under. And at this time, we're going to be having player three running out towards that towards the middle and we're going to be having player two now set a screen on player three we want player three to go up the middle and what we want to have happen here is obviously player three to get that ball and to dribble up towards the half court and then set up our offense however what happens if player three's man is on player three and he's like right here what I want to see happen is player four to come out and set a mid-court screen. Meanwhile, player one is now leaking out. Player two is leaking out the other side. And now I want to see player three lead his man into player four and then leak and then pop off. And now we could possibly have a three on one situation or if we really want to do our thing, we could have player 5 pop down when player 3 was way down here and set a screen for player 2 so that now player 3 could pass the player 2. It's all about screening. That is the major thing. Screening to get guys open and screening the ball handler so that you can allow him to have more area on the basketball court to operate. Now, the, of course, Press defenses, there's a lot of coaches who are really upset right now with other coaches, especially at the younger age groups, who are running a press defense. Now, if the rule book is open to allow you to run a press defense, then there's really nothing stopping you from doing that. And if you're a coach who's upset with another coach who's having grade 6 kids run a zone press, maybe you should be able to teach your players how to be able to handle full court pressure. And I do have drills on, said, uh, on, on that kind of thing where you can teach your players how to handle pressure when the other team is pressuring your team. 
Now, keeping in mind, they're going to be going up against a press defense sometime in their life. So, if you can teach your team how to handle a press at an earlier age, they're going to be much better ball handlers later on in life. They may even be able to, in their mind, slow the game down so that, hey, I'm getting pressured, but I'm not worried. I know that if I take it up the middle, if I dribble the ball up the middle, and I have a couple of players screen for me, or I'm keeping my head up to pass to somebody who's open, who maybe I just draw on a double team from, then it's going to help you a ton. So, of course, uh, a couple of videos ago, I posted a practice plan on how you can handle uh, situations like this, how you can teach your team how to handle a press. Definitely, every team should be running drills like that, no matter what age they're at, because it's teaching them defense, but it's also teaching them ball handling skills. I know this is sort of like a rant. I know I might get some hate on this, but I would love to have your comments below on what you think about kids running a press defense. I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.